Languages are so important. We take them for granted. We take them as if they're like the air that we breathe. But in each language, there's thousands and thousands of years of ideas that speakers before us have developed painstakingly and built in and given to us. So they, each language gives us such a tremendous amount of knowledge. What I tell any smart person who knows a lot, who's an expert in their field, is to remember that lots of people they talk to don't have that same amount of knowledge and don't have that same amount of expertise. And so just because you said something doesn't necessarily mean that people heard it the way that you meant it. And so the way that you um, help prevent some misunderstandings is first to listen, to really try to understand what the other person knows and understands, and then try to meet them where they, where they already are. Sometimes we take what we know for granted. We think everyone else knows what we, what we already know, but we've all worked very hard to learn the things that we, that we know and to acquire the expertise that we have, and so just be kind and remember that other people might not know all the technical things that you do. Uh, it's, so, uh, it's so interesting that you ask that. Every generation feels that the generation below them is speaking a different language and they feel like something drastic has happened. Uh, that's just because na languages naturally change uh, and especially they're changed by young people. So young people as they're coming up, they uh, invent different ways of talking, they work on the language that they're speaking. And so l linguists joke that you'll know that language has stopped changing when you can listen to your teenage daughter on the phone and understand what she's saying. Uh, it's just a natural part of, uh, part of language as being a living thing. But of course, the more communication technologies we have, the uh, more different ways people have of expressing themselves, the richer all of those uh, different new ways of saying things are. Languages can differ on even the most basic things. So. Some languages have lots of words for color. Some languages only have a couple of words like light and dark. Some languages don't use words like left and right and instead put everything in cardinal directions like north, south, east, west. Um, some languages um, have very simple ways of making verbs where the verb never changes. So if you say, I drink beer, the verb drink is always going to be the same. Other languages have incredibly complicated verbs where there might be 20 different positions and each one uh, will have lots and lots of things that you could put in there. And so there will be literally thousands of ways to say the verb drink depending on all of the different elements that you can put on there. For me, the most amazing thing about language is the incredible diversity of them. Right? The fact that languages differ from one another in so, in so much means that there's incredible flexibility and incredible ingenuity in our human minds, right? So each, each of us is carrying around this brain between our ears and we think a particular way, but actually each of our brains is capable of thinking all of these other different ways. And so humans are so inventive, they've invented all of these different ways of constructing reality and we can invent many more. And so the fact that there's so much diversity also means there's so much more possibility for the future, all these different ways to think that we haven't even thought of. Of course, lots of languages right now are asking questions about gender and how gender should be expressed. And here also, there are lots of differences across languages. So some languages don't have any gender marking, so they don't uh, have any pronouns that are marked for gender. Other languages have lots of gender marking, like uh, in Hebrew, the word for you is gendered. In Thai, the word for I is gendered, right? So how much information there is about a gender and how much distributed it is throughout the language can really differ. I think that's really important to keep in mind when we have these debates about how things can be or should be. Um, it's just to remember that there are lots of possibilities that work and there's no one right answer. So often in English, when, we, when I hear people argue um, we have to get rid of gendered pronouns or we can't get rid of gendered pronouns. Um, whether we do it or not is going to be only one small part of a much larger topic of how to deal with gender equality. But anyone in English who says, we can't get rid of he and she, you have to have gendered pronouns, otherwise we won't be able to understand the language. I always try to point out that almost all pronouns in English are already gender neutral. So the word I, the word we, the word you, <laughs> the word they, almost all pronouns in English are actually gender neutral. And no one has ever been bothered by this, right? No, there's no party that's trying to advocate for adding gender to all of those pronouns. It's only third person singular pronouns that have gender. And so the things that people always try to preserve is whatever they're used to. And that's natural, you're used to it, it feels comfortable. 
But just because you're used to it doesn't mean it has to be that way. Languages have always changed. Uh, English has changed. Uh, it no longer has grammatical gender. It's natural. If enough people want it, it'll change again.